All the world over, one can find psilocybin. But our earliest findings takes us to the world down under, where around 10,000 BCE, it seemed like the Aborigine Australians had a trick up their sleeves. Archaeologists have found multiple dancing iconography in the northern Australian region, suggesting its importance with a very familiar psychedelic theme. From 10,000 BCE on, our information lingers on the brutal age of colonization, where the Spaniards found that the tribes in Central America all used the mushroom in their spiritual practices. Actually, in the Nahuatl language, their specific mushroom was known as Tiananaketl, which literally translates the flesh of the gods. In the 17th century, Russian colonizers found that Siberian tribes wouldn't hunt but follow certain reindeer to a red or white spotted mushroom so that the tribe could later drink the urine of that reindeer so they could sustain the frigid temperatures of Siberia a lot longer than normal. Ancient Egyptian culture had been known for its mushroom stone carvings. Archaeologists have found within hieroglyphs depicting the mushrooms used in private ceremonies amongst the upper class and priesthood. Other findings reveal that since the mushrooms don't sprout from seed, that the Egyptians believe that the mushrooms were placed along the Nile by the god Osiris himself. In ancient Greece, the upper class cults worshipping the goddess of agriculture Demeter held ritual ceremonies where a very powerful psychoactive brew was made with psilocybin in the Amanita muscaria mushroom. The ceremonies were attended by famous scholars such as Homer, Plato, and even Aristotle. The ceremonies were so shrouded in secrecy that even speaking a word of their importance in public led to one's immediate death. In 1799, the world received its first medical documentation of the effects of the psilocybin mushroom. When a British family who were picking their fruits and vegetables along the Thames River unknowingly grabbed a bunch of special mushrooms along with what we imagine to be the normal harvest. Later that night, the whole family ended up ingesting an unspeakable amount of what we now know to be Liberty Caps, which resulted in all of them suffering an extreme case of hysteria, which led into the public. Doctors at the time reported the family's dilated pupils, the hysteria, and the disassociative of the euphoria. Those local doctors then shared their findings with their contemporaries, and in 1803, a new taxonomic classification was done. First name, Agricus Similacita. At 64 years later, in 1871, the classification was changed to Psilocybe Similacita. Thank goodness. In 1957, a banker by the name of R. Gordon Watson published a story in Life magazine, of all places, that exposed Americans to the term magic mushroom. The article recalled a trip that he and his wife had taken to Mexico, where they met the shaman Marina Sabina and became the first Westerners to participate in an indigenous mushroom ceremony. A year later, in 1958, the famous chemist Albert Hoffman successfully isolated and identified the psilocybin compound, adding another metal to his list. By 1960, capitalism caught on and synthetic psilocybin was being sold by multiple companies, a few in the New York State, which happens to be close to the Harvard University where the infamous Timothy Leary and Richard Alpert started doing research with psilocybin on their students. These years of legal research at the Ivy League school were known as the Harvard Psilocybin Project. The 1960s would explode with psychedelic use, and then sadly came the rise of cults using psilocybin for their own personal use. That caused alert for the government, and in 1971, the party was forcefully shut down. That year, the United Nations would hold a convention on psychotropic substances, which seemed to be all the ammunition Richard Nixon needed at the time to launch his incredibly racist and failed war on drugs. For about 30 years, there was silence in the public field of psilocybin research. Well, that was until the 90s. In 97, the University of Zurich announces intended research to find similarities between schizophrenia patients and those under a dose of psilocybin. From this research, we get the term ego death that I'm sure that many of you cosmonauts may know about. In 2015, when these memes were relevant, 
the New Mexico Court of Appeals ruled that growing psilocybin wasn't considered manufacturing a controlled substance. In 2018, the Right to Try Act gave terminally ill patients legal precedent to take psychedelics for the treatment. Later that year, the American FDA would grant psilocybin breakthrough research status. And, well... In 2019, Denver, Colorado became the first U.S. city to decriminalize psilocybin. Oakland, California quickly became the second. 2020 started in a huge way with Santa Cruz joining the wave, Ann Arbor, Michigan, the whole state of Oregon, and the nation's capital, D.C. In 2021, Washita County, Michigan, Sumville, Cambridge, and Northampton, Massachusetts, as did Seattle, Washington, Arcadia, California, and on November 3rd, Detroit, Michigan became the latest to join the American decriminalization wave of psilocybin. Mm -hmm. 